kid Vito here, he knows you're a family, you know, he went to school with the kids and what have you, right? So you listen? So one day he said, after he reads the book, he says, boy, I would like to see uh, Joey Brancato, right? So he read it in the book. So he said, hey, you see Joey Brancato? I said, yeah, I seen him last month. He came <coughs> up to visit me. So I was fucking with him. So he got on the phone with Joe Cap. He said, Joe, you're never going to be this kid Vito. Guess who he seen last month? He said, Joey Brancato. So I see his face turn. He said, kid, kid. <laughs> Joey died a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, because I read it in the book, I said, yeah, I knew Joey Brancato. He had a wooden leg. He said, yeah, yeah, that's him, yeah. He was a boss too, right? No, he was not. He was all me. I went. I went to school with Broncos. I don't know. Which one? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the names. They had a lot of big dogs. They, they had a lot of money though. These Broncos had a lot of fucking money. No, I wasn't. Yeah. They were rich. They had a key. A, a key to dogs like that. A key to. They must have had a lot of money in the house. Joey Broncos. No, not Joey Broncos. Yeah, we're just in front of uh, Sonny's old house. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time here. I was good friends with his daughter, Gia. Matter of fact, we used to take his car out of the driveway over here. We used to um, joyride with it, walk around the neighborhood, jog down these streets. We had a lot of good times here. I remember with kids, 15, 16 years old, we used to take Sonny's car out joyriding until he caught us one day. and. Uh, had a lot of good times here. At the same time, there was a lot of heartache. Sonny uh, was in and out of jail by parole violations. Uh, had a lot of problems with his kids, drugs, and what have you. Uh, but I just wanted everybody to know, like you know, it was a nice neighborhood back then. And uh, I think we're gonna go. We're gonna show you uh, Herrick's High School, where me and Gia grew up. We had a lot of good times there. We were very well known in the school. And uh, yeah, this was the school that. Uh, me and Sonny's daughter, Gia Franzis, went to through the long circular, uh, I guess, uh, driveway here. Cars used to pull up to drop their kids off. And it was a time when me and Gia Franzis used to come to school in a limousine and uh, had a driver, had a bodyguard that was 6'10". Uh, I remember the students, they uh, gave him a nickname, Lurch, from the Adams family. The guy was so big. Uh, I don't know why Gia took me in the limousine, but she never took anybody else. Uh, it wasn't an all year thing, but it went on after Sonny's release in 1978. Uh, maybe he felt this, you know, he, there was a power struggle in the family, what have you, gotta protect his daughter. So she would come by my house and the back window would lower and she'd say, get in, and I'd get in. And I'd uh, go to school with her in class. And I remember every student, the principal, uh, Teachers, they would look with them, you know, you got to understand this was 1978, the tail end of the mob, the mafia in this country, and they never seen nothing like that before. Uh, it was something like right out of a movie. I just came from a dysfunctional family. I did a lot of bad here, and uh, after my story gets out, there's been a big progress, what have you. I want to do this school right. I want to make uh, all the wrongs I did to any kids, the fights that I had. Uh, I want to go back and I want to make amends with these people and I uh, I want us to do something good. I want us to do something good in life. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm sure I'll get some good ideas from these kids. Uh, as we're talking, I'm a little self-conscious with my mouth. When I got arrested, my brother and mother, they made up a lot of stories about me. They honestly did. They, they lied about me. And the police came in the house with a search warrant. and. Uh, I was just getting my belongings, my clothes, and I was uh, handcuffed, leg shackled, I was maced, they, they brutally beat me. Uh, later on they said that uh, I assaulted them. I don't know how you assault uh, 20 cops with sticks and guns or whatever. I was I was a boxer at the time, I was 145 pounds. Some of these cops were 300 pounds, you know, big beer bellies and what have you, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't resist. But I had a lot of broken teeth, I remember swallowing my teeth and swallowing blood. Um, I had to get a lot, of, a lot of dental work right before I went to jail, some of it. I couldn't get all of it done. Uh, I had to get root canals, I had to get caps, I had perfect teeth. And uh, I had to get a partial. 
Then over the years, time, 15 years, 17 years from smoking and what have you, that stuff doesn't last forever. I had to redo everything. Uh, the problem was uh, I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I haven't had a good job because of my felony. And, um, you know, Sonny needed to come out of jail. He was 100 years old. And I, I was determined to, I thought that was more important to get him out of jail than to take care of my team. Uh, so I spent some money on a lawyer. I probably spent more writing President Obama letters. As you guys know, I have, like, you see, you know, I, I got over 20 letters back from Obama. I don't think anybody's got that many letters. Uh, and, you know, I got him out. So I'm happy about that. Greg, tell us about your correspondence with Sonny when you were in jail. Like, all the letters you got. Or the, this one in particular right here. He wrote, he wrote quite a few letters. I'm not going to put them all out or whatever. He hasn't wrote anybody letters. Um, this one letter he said, you know, don't don't put any money on a lawyer. My family got burnt by lawyers in the past. And, you know, federal lawyers are a ton of money. You know, uh, his lawyer that I got him was Ken Aronson. The guy's $600 an hour. Uh, I didn't have 600 to pay him. And Ken Aronson was an understanding person and whatever. And uh, But it still cost me money. And then I, I writing Obama, you know, I... I went through so many stamps and what have you. I couldn't pay a lawyer and, and get my dental work. You know, it was it was too much. It wasn't like a cavity or something. I had to get new caps. I had to get different stuff. You know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, why did you, uh, you know, get Sonny a lawyer? Why did you do all this work and pay for transcripts and get a Madison Avenue lawyer and what have you? Uh, they said, why did Michael do that? That was his job. Uh, I don't know whose job it was, but um, you know, sometimes in life. Man plans and God decides, you know, I, I, for whatever reason, I was chosen to do this. I had a, the reason why I did it too was, Chia Franzese always told me, stay close to my dad, stay close to my dad. I think she's seen some kind of family betrayal or what have you, or nobody was really, you know, that tight with him. And uh, I've been very tight with him for a long time. So. I just want to give a big shout out to all the kids in Herricks, the, the alumni, uh, John Okulski, the principal, uh, the alumni page. Um, I hope that everyone follows this story. I'll give you a little more insight about Gia as we go on. Um, it was a very uh, difficult situation. Um, I want to make amends with anybody I did wrong. Uh, I get paid from a story. Anything good happens, I might have a lawsuit in criminal court for what they did to me. I'm going to make amends. I want to do something with people from Herrick's High School. Feel free to contact me on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you.